Well, welcome back. Well, that's to you too, Ozzy. I'm Thank not you. just talking to TV land out there. Thank you. You don't say that when we're in the office. I don't have to treat you with respect when you're in your office. Come on. Uh, this is uh, CSI podcast number five. This is the notes to number five. And today is May 15th. It is. 2014. Our tournament's in like two months. It's coming Are quick. you ready? Oops. It's a piece of cake. Piece of cake. Piece of cake. I love it when people say that. You, ye who know not what you talk about. <laughs> it's going to be fun. Um, so we're just going to bring you up to speed. Uh, Mr. Ozzy. Oh, I'm Mark Griffin. This is Ozzy Reynolds. And uh, Oh, and I'd like to point out, uh, I've got this uh, CSI <laughs> tar, tar production staff t-shirt on. It's very professional looking. And uh, that's because I wore a green shirt yes. to a studio production with a green screen. So your head would nice have been floating. Like, yeah, I thought that would be pretty cool. I would just a floating your, egg. Your head, <laughs> your head in your hands, and you could be saying, I'm magic. Yeah. Yeah. Justin, you know gave, when, when, Justin yeah. gave me the idiot award tonight. That's okay. All right. Anyhow, we're going to go over a couple things in the industry. There's a few things shaken out. And uh, First of all, let's just talk about some of the industry news, and you have put some good notes together. Snooker's been kind of hogging some news uh, in, on, on AZ Billiards. I, the number one thing, uh, I'll actually boot it up a notch or two, is Chris Melling is now qualified as a professional snooker player. I'm not sure how many, they had like 160 or 180 players and a single elimination, but he ended up as the top, one of the last four standing. And uh, he's a very capable player. When he's stroking the ball, he's, he's, like a, he's, he's pretty amazing. He really is. I had no idea he played snooker at all. I just had no idea. Okay. I mean, I, maybe I know he just played a bunch of weak players. I doubt that. <laughs> no, not over there. And Alex and Corey also tried. Corey didn't fare very well. I don't think he won a match. Alex won two matches, and lost his last match four to two, I believe. So did Alex make the cut, or no, is it not no, over? No, no, no. There's only four people made it. Oh. Four out of the 180. Okay. Or something like that. It was. I don't know how many it was. It was. I was watching the brackets uh, the way they do it. But everything single elimination. It's a race to four. Mm -hmm. Four frames. And uh, that's pretty exciting for Chris. So uh, he's got the potential to really do some damage, but as uh, somebody posted on AZ Billiards, now he gets to play with the big boys. So, hey. you know, and I, I think Alex probably surprised some people because his defense is so good. You don't get to and be a big boy without playing the big boys. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, that Everybody should remember that a little more often in pool. I, mean, I don't see them running up and say, I want four blacks and 12 reds. You know, <laughs> I'm a seven. No. <laughs> Anyhow, that's part of it. And the other interesting news was, Ronnie O'Sullivan was playing Mark Selby, and he was ahead, what do you got here, eight to three. I think he was even a touch higher than that. And Selby won the last two or three frames that night and comes back. And he wins like 10 frames in a row, crazy thing or something. And he beats Ronnie O'Sullivan, O'Sullivan 18 to 14 for the World Snooker Championship, which was 500,000 pounds, I believe, or 350,000 pounds. 300,000 pounds. Well, it's $500,000 yep. for first. Yep. And it was like a $300,000 swing, though, between first and second. Yep. Yep. And unfortunately, Mr. Uh, O'Sullivan, and he said he wasn't hurt and everything was fine, but he wrecked his Audi R8 on the way home with his son in the car, but nobody was hurt. Thank goodness. And he said he wasn't, it wasn't uh, out of anger. And he just, I don't know what happened. I don't know, <coughs> but it was, uh, and he took it actually in very good spirits. He made some good comments about it, and, uh, and, uh, but then he also announced he's going to take a break from the game for a while. I won't pretend that I watched uh, the whole yeah. snooker no, finals. No. I didn't have the time to do that. But I did go back and watch. Um, <laughs> I'll be a YouTube geek. But yeah. it was a clip that someone had put together of some of the most amazing the shots, shots from oh, Selby. So the, that's crazy. They took some of Selby, uh, Selby's yeah, good shots funny. and kind of clipped them together. Whew. Well, that well, was amazing. Well, It, it looked like I was watching a trick shot competition. Well, yeah. Some it, of those. Is this the one where they're doing a lot of draw shots? It was, there uh, were some draw shots, but just moving around yeah. the table, doing uh, yeah. really, really uh, yeah. there was a, I saw touchy, one, touchy breakouts yeah. and things of that nature. But it was amazing. The interesting thing is, and I've, I've played on English snooker tables when I was over there in like the 80s, my recollection is that the pockets are quite a bit more generous than we're used to in American snooker. Because most Americanized <laughs> snooker tables, they get golfed. American you know? snooker? Yeah, there's a, such a game as American that's snooker. That's an oxymoron. Yeah, okay. But anyhow... If you can find a 6x12 table, there's not that many around. Uh, but the American pockets seem to be smaller. And that's usually because so many people, and that's what we did in Alaska, had to get that Alaska thing in. We had three and an eighth inch pockets because we played golf. You can't have buckets. There is no way in the world you would ever make a ball down the rail on our tables. Mm -hmm. Now, I noticed that they do make them. In fact, there was one of those shots you said, and he powered that, yep. like 100 miles an hour and drew the ball like, 
Well, he drove it down. He, he dry, probably drove, drew the ball like 12 feet. Mm -hmm. And they were like four feet apart when he hit it. So, I mean, the, the, and I know they use the, uh, I think it's Farn, Harnsworth cloth. I think it is, but it's, it's a nappy. It has a grain. And, uh, and they iron it to make it. It's, it's kind of an interesting game. Um, but there's a lot of skill to it. I mean, there's a tremendous amount of skill. But Alex, some, one of his fortes is uh, his safe game. And the big boys, their, their, their arsenal is, you give me a shot, I'm going to run the table. Mm -hmm. And so if you can slow them down, you can, there, there's a lot of things you can do. So. Yeah. The thing that struck me, uh, the thing I took away from this whole headline the most, and I read the article on AZ Billiards, was, uh, one, it was a, an amazing comeback, amazing On oh, Selby's part? It was off the charts. But then yeah. the money involved. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, it just it shows you how big Snooker is there compared to how small yeah. all of pool is here. Well, there's a lot of differences. You know, it used to be year, years ago it was Benson and Hedges did all that. And then they, uh, the U.K. or Europe or wherever, they got involved in the no advertising of cigarettes and this and that. And they kind of took a big dive for a while. Yep. But now they've gotten it. They've uh, Barry Hearn has taken it over in the last couple of years, and they're they have snooker tournaments all over. A lot of the emphasis is going to China with big money over there. Well, three hundred. Yeah. At, at when I made these notes a couple yeah. of days ago, three hundred thousand pounds for one tournament. Two days ago was five hundred and five thousand dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Who in this country would like to play a finals and win five hundred and five thousand sure. yeah. dollars? I agree. It's amazing. And it's it's also amazing that they've uh, uh, taught. The spectators and there's little old ladies and everybody, the big spectators from the big crowd, how to understand the game. But you know, snooker in itself is a pretty simple game. You know, red number, red number, red number. Spot the numbers when there's no numbers, when there's no reds left, you shoot them off in rotation. But they've been doing it for so so many years. When I I've been into London twice in '86 and like '95 or something, and there was snooker on TV every day for at least a couple hours. Now and and this is before the days of. 28,000 TV channels. This is when there was like six TV channels or something because it's it's done through their, I don't know if it's Wait, ABC. Wait, how old are you in this story? <laughs> That's, you know, is it, not this that old. So they had TV? Yeah, they okay, had TV, okay. yeah. Just wanted to make no, sure. You didn't have to crank it. You plugged <laughs> it into the wall and everything. But it's 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 pretty amazing that snooker has just been a, a, a mainstay on your, in English TV, but it's because of the funding. And we've gone over that before, but basically they have a teletax, telly. You, you pay, I think it's, somebody says it's like 120 bucks a year to have a TV in your house. If you have three TVs, you pay three times that amount. And that funds, I'm not saying this is completely accurate and it doesn't really make any difference. It's almost like their BBC is like our PBS, the public TV, mm -hmm. except there's no government. It's just, it's, it, I mean, you know, it's, it's through that teletax thing. Sure. But they fund snooker and many other things. And obviously we could have a great, Nine ball tour. If if the if 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 everybody everybody t everybody paid fifty bucks a year for their TV. Well, and, also if if, you know, if, it's, if, it's not, if we in this country drew the spectators and the viewers that they do well, over there, we would also be in a lot better shape. And the key to that is, I'm a firm believer, and I don't know the numbers or anything else, is because you can gamble on it. Everybody can invest in the game and the outcome. It's a legitimate bookmaking is 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 legal and everything else. And it's, it's a shame that the U.S. has never done that on billiard games except once, and that didn't work out too well. And shame on them. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, um, snooker's been, I mean, snooker's a great game. And you, if you've never tried it, try it sometime. It's, uh, even playing eight ball on a snooker table with the small balls, which is also interesting. In America, the snooker balls are two and an eighth. In England, they're two and a sixteenth. Mm. So they're even smaller. You didn't know that, did you? I don't. I defer to you, the well, guy with the there's, wisdom. There's no telling how much crap I know. Hey, when you when you get to your age, you can't help but absorb knowledge. I probably forgot more than you know. Yeah. Anywho, um, yeah. Total viewership: twenty-six and a half million, six million for the finals. It's crazy. Yeah, it's unreal. It is crazy. Yeah. It's unreal. And of course, that's why and, you get and the hat, And hats off to them. Thank goodness it's doing well somewhere. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, and. Uh, History, I mean, uh, Snooker's got a great historical background and legacy and everything. It's pretty exciting. Yep. And Chris Melling, I mean, that's pretty exciting, too. I mean, he's, uh, I don't think he's guaranteed anything, but you have to qualify to be a, quote, tour, a uh, touring pro. I have no idea how many there are. I don't know if there's 10, 20, 200. I don't know. I don't know how that works. 
but yeah. four, only four qualified out of this field of 100 and whatever num number of players. And congratulations to Mark Selby and yeah. congratulations to Chris Smelly. Yeah. Let's see how he does. Congratulations to you too. It's nice. I don't ask me what for. I'll, I'll think of something. For working next, with you? Yeah, I'll think yeah. of something next couple of days. Um, and I think you want to go over the uh, our CSI Invitational. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, a little bit you know, we've been Justin releasing the thing up. We've something. been releasing the names uh, as they were confirmed. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and recap all the participants that are going to be in our upcoming CSI Invitationals, ten ball and eight ball events. As you can see from North America, oh, yeah, yeah. we have Shane Van Boning, Mike DeShane, Corey Duell, and John Mora. Those were the four players, very selective group from all of North America. Then we have the Philippines, and uh, boy, you had a lot to choose from in the Philippines, but we have Efren Reyes, Warren Kiamko, Dennis Orcolo, and Francisco Bustamante. In Asia, some of these guys are not as well-known yeah, as the other folks. Yeah, but they're going to be. <laughs> but they're becoming more well-known. Yeah. Pinyi Ko. Now, everybody knows him as Ko Pin or how do I you know, some people say Ping Yi Ko, some people say Ko Ping Yi. Because his little brother is, the, the last name is Ping Chung Ko. Yep. So Ping Yi Ko. And they're both uh, world champion junior players. His younger brother, Ping Chung Ko. Uh, I'm going to butcher the name, but Yu Hassan Ching and Jung Lin Chang. They'll have nicknames both. by the time they get out of here. Phenomenal. Well, <laughs> Ching, I, I, I saw Ching, an article yeah. about him. He came over here and, uh, and won some tournament. White Diamonds, White Diamonds I he think. he played... Very, and he was challenging anybody. And everybody. I noticed in the article his name was Kevin Ching. Okay, there you go. So I guess he's Kevin. That's easier to say than you, Hassan. <laughs> and then on the Europe side, we have Darren Appleton, Ralph Souquet, Torsten Homan, Thank you. and Jason Shaw. Yeah. All these guys are phenomenal players. They're exciting And to I watch. cannot wait yeah. to watch this. And just to inform everybody again on the format Please do. that we've decided. It will be round-robin format, four groups of four. The four groups are not regional groups like you just saw. The four groups will consist of one of one player from each of the regions. So you don't have, and no, no one group has two from the same region. Correct, correct. One player from every competitive group will advance to a single elimination bracket, single elimination so final bracket. four players. Four players will come out of the round-robin. Then we'll have a semifinal and a final. Yeah. And that's for the eight ball. Well, that's for the, the ten, ten ball. The ten ball is the first one. And then we do it again for the eight ball, with, but with different groups. Just make sure that we don't have any duplicate groups. They, yep. shake, they shake up again. No, okay. two, no two players will be in the same group uh, and this competing is gonna be, against each other. It's going to be exciting. And, you know, there's a lot of downsides to uh, round robins, and we I think we've eliminated most of the risks. Um, uh, we've let all the players know that if there's any any funny business done, they will be in trouble, so to speak. And we're we're, we're pretty adamant on that kind of stuff, just like Tar was. Is there any? You just you, you only do it once because you'll never be back again. Well, and another thing we did, and I don't know if this was really made public or not, but the last round for the round robin matches themselves are. Which is when, if, if there was any funny business happening, that's when it would. That's yeah. when it would happen. Would it's be a the money game. would be the third yeah. match yeah. that everybody plays. It's a money round. Uh, those are money rounds. So the winner is going to get paid a certain amount. Yeah. The loser will not. Yeah. So we're going to, that'll hopefully that'll help cut down on any funny business. Well, but also we these have these are pretty credible players. Sure, they're, they're not going to risk. They're just these are professional. They're not going to risk it. Even though you guys don't know who the the uh, uh, Taiwanese Chinese players are, they're they're well known. And I mean this this uh, um, Ch Chang is uh, number two. I believe there. so. Yeah. So. Yeah. so that's interesting. Uh, it's going to be great. Part, be part of what we wanted to do tonight, we've done the draw. Okay. So we know the groups. We know who's playing for the ten about. ball and the eight ball. Do we actually have you posted the schedule so people know when it starts? Not That'll yet. It'll be on our website. It I mean, will be. Uh, we haven't got it all up yet. Still right? waiting on some logistical things for that. Yeah. Uh, but we thought we'd go ahead sure. and release the groups. So for the ten ball invitational, which is July eighteenth through the twentieth. Group A will consist of Shane Van Boning, Torsten Homan, Warren Kiamko, and Pin Yi Ko or Ko Pin Yi, whichever you prefer. Well, that's now, interesting because now Shane and, Pin, and Ko, Ko Pin Yi are in the same group because they're also going to be playing that challenge yep, match. And that's purely by luck of the yeah, draw. Yeah. Um, so people are going to get to watch them twice. So, for example, those of you who may not be totally familiar with what a round robin is, 
take group A for example on your screen, those four players, everybody will play everybody once. Okay, and whoever has the best record in that group after all those matches occur will move on to the elimination bracket. And in the event of a tie as far as wins and losses, these are races to eight, I believe? Races to eight, yeah. yep. And so, we do have tiebreaker systems yeah, set up. For, yeah, for, that'd be by games and everything. So there's a lot yep. of... A, yep, so um, it'll be it, it, games one and head-to-head -head and all that kind of yeah. stuff. But, so in group B, we have Mike Deshane, Darren Appleton, Dennis Orcolo, Jung Lin Chang. Wow. That's group C, <laughs> John Mora, Ralph Suquet, Efren Reyes, Ping Chung Ko, and Group D, Corey Duell, Jason Shaw, Francisco Bustamante, and I'm going to say Kevin Ching. Okay, yeah. <laughs> you know, it would be interesting for people, we, we, we should try to see if we can put together some kind of a, a scorecard to see if you can guess who wins which brackets. Yeah, kind of like it, a college football yeah, bracket. Yeah, it would be kind of interesting because... I mean, or basketball. I mean, it, it's there's some. <laughs> who knows? Look at all the match. I mean, you're yeah. going to have in in each of these groups, everybody's going to play everybody once, yeah. and then we're going to have the elimination bracket. It's going to be phenomenal yeah. matches. Yeah, there's going to be some great, great matches. Phenomenal. So that is the ten ball, July 18th through the 20th. Those are the groups. We will have the complete schedule and match times for every match posted on our website in the coming. I'm going to say weeks, about, just again. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully days, but How maybe many guys hopefully. come out of each group? One, right. one person comes out of each group. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And that gives you four, and then, they, then you play down with them. Yep. yep. And so, all this, there's only two tables. Um, during the, the, the preliminary rounds, we'll be using both tables. There will be streaming off the one table, and if, it's, if it, that match ends, it'll be set up. To, they, we'll be able to see the, the uh, second table. But all the finals, and when you get down to the last... It'll all be on one table. And keep in mind, if you stay at the Rio, it's free in the room. The others will be on pay-per-view. And I guess we've got to figure out what that's going to have to get that stuff. Yeah, Justin and I are working on that now. Uh, all these matches will be available pay-per-view. I'm sure we'll have daily packages and a complete packages. And then so now let's hear what's going on with the eight ball. And the eight yep. ball is last because that's when the eight ball teams is going on or during our nationals. And they'll, they'll really start to appreciate how the eight ball can be played, even though they're playing on seven-foot tables and the pros are playing on a nine-foot table. Yep. So, again, for the eight ball, completely different groups uh, so that, you know, two guys aren't paired together in the same group for both events. Mark, why don't you uh, tell us who's going to be in, in these groups? I can do that. So, in uh, Group A, you've got Mike Deshane, Jason Shaw, Warren Kiamko, and Cole... Is that the same right, Ko? Ping oh. Chung Ko. Oh. Okay. Oh, Ping Chung Ko. You got it written right up there. I didn't see that. Okay. I was reading off That's the That's why sheet. I was pointing at the screen. Well, you know. Come on. <laughs> well, they can see it. I don't have to read it off. Group B, Corey Duell, Torsten Homan, Efren Reyes, and Jung Lin Chang. You know, and an eight ball, don't underestimate Efren Reyes. Don't underestimate <laughs> Efren Reyes in any <laughs> game. I know, but... These, you know, there's been some comments like, ah, this is, and this is a, we're so excited to have Efren. I mean, he is the man. I mean, I don't care if he comes in like me and on oxygen and with crutches. He's still the man, okay? And don't anybody forget it. So, Group C, Shane Van Boning, Ralph Suquet, Dennis Orcoyo. See, now, we're all familiar with those guys. And you're, you're Kevin Chang. And I think the people from White Diamonds are familiar with him. And that was down in the Louisiana, Texas area somewhere. Yep. And he was... Uh, he was trying to match up and couldn't get anybody to play. They were, he was offering weight. And That's strong. They, and they waited. <laughs> Group D, John Mora, Darren Appleton, Francisco Bustamante, and Pinyi Ko. Ko Pinyi. Yeah. It's, <laughs> that's tough. Darren just put a spanking on everybody at that Make It Happen thing that Pat Fleming put together. That, that was kind of shocking. Yeah. Uh, oh, and, and but, I do want to say one thing. And uh, I was kind of wondering how I would phrase this. Uh, the Taiwan's, the Taiwan player's manager yeah. uh, informed me yeah. via email that they are willing to, um, oh, I don't know. Just, yeah. Friendly wager. Friendly wager. Uh, to anybody. Yeah, that's, I think that's on, worldwide, by the way. On any match, <laughs> whether it be challenge match, invitational match, it doesn't matter. Uh, they have complete confidence that their guys are going to come over here and dominate 
That's not my words. I'm just relaying the information that I got from the Taiwan folks. So if uh, any of you guys are going to be in town and you'd like to take him up on that offer, now, you're be there. talking from the matches, or you're talking about this other side? I don't think talking about? from the tone that he yeah. he wrote that message to me, it didn't matter. Well, those are but the races date. What I what I heard they were saying was, they'll take those two Taiwan players. That he got. Uh, that don't, that don't I don't know. You're talking about a different issue. Yeah, is that a different issue? Okay. Yeah, they're, they're right. trying to get another another match yeah, going, yeah. but he made it quite clear to me that uh, doesn't matter who the opponents yeah. are, they're they're willing to put a little something extra on it. So. Yeah, there's going to be some serious serious. Uh, I still go back to that thread that was on AZ Billiards where everybody's screaming because it wasn't a race to 50 between Copigny and, and Shane. I said, wait a minute, you know, they're playing a race to 21, and I'm sure there's going to be a couple other little incidental races popping up here, there, and everywhere. I have no idea how we're going to handle it time-wise because we're, we, we're laying out our schedule, and they have to work around that. And, uh, and uh, if something happens, Justin will uh, try to coordinate it, and if we can, we can. If we can't, we can't, you know. Yep. But if you're in the house, you can watch it. So... <laughs> Yeah. Also, at the uh, at the threat of beating a dead horse to death, we do have two challenge matches already scheduled. We have a third that's I thought would be far along in the works that we could announce it tonight, but it is not. We still have a few details to iron out. But the first one is uh, most of you are probably already well aware. We have the Kamui Challenge, July seventeenth. That'll be at five p.m. Pacific. 8 p.m. Eastern. So that is before they play in the uh, 10 ball it is. That's competition. Be that's before the 10 ball invitational kicks yeah. up. Justin, do you have the graphic for that or no? Uh, no, I've got the one for the other one. Okay. Though. So that one will be the first challenge match, July 17th, that will be available pay per view uh, through playcsipool.com. All the instructions will be there. The second challenge uh -huh. match. But you got to say what they're doing. They're playing 10 ball, race to 21, winner breaks. Winter breaks is going to be the interesting part of it. Yeah, because everybody says that Copigny is the guy that has the break that can stand up to shake. I'm sorry, but I've heard it before. I, I'm not from the state of Missouri, but you're going to have to show me. I, I mean, I'm, I, I really like Shane's game, but the boy came to play, and he will show I just, And I'm not saying that Copigny can't win because he plays really, really, really good. So it's going to be exciting. And there's going to be vengeance because those guys are playing in the same bracket in the 10 ball the next day that will or two. Be, that will be so interesting. But yeah. that's a race to eight. So now we're going to have all kinds of yeah. bragging rights going on. The second <laughs> challenge match that we announced, I believe, two weeks ago is, well, maybe we announced it before that, but it's the OB Challenge. And this one's cool. July 21st, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. It is Mike DeShane and Corey Duell. Paired up against Efren Reyes and Francisco Bustamante, Scotch doubles eight ball, race to 21, winner breaks. Yeah. Well, I'm betting that Francisco's going to be breaking most of the time, but those Francisco and Efren, I mean, they're like the, they're like a dancing couple. They played together so many times, they know how the other they're, and they'll have fun with it. You know. Well, this is going to yeah. be great, particularly oh, if be awesome. we mic them up and we can hear them communicate with each other. Yeah. It's going to be this is going to be going to be pretty interesting. This is pretty exciting stuff. Yep. And then you do have a third one, but we don't have, we're just not ready to announce it yet. I do have a third one, and it, it will be July 22nd, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. It'll be the day after that. Um, I was really hoping we'd be able to announce it tonight, but hey, things happen. Well, we you, can't didn't, you just didn't do your job. That's because you don't have your, you have a tar production I can't even wear on. the right shirt I mean, yeah, for the podcast. Yeah, good Lord. You know, oh, well. I'm colorblind, I wear the right shirt. The good thing is you set the bar so low that I'm still fine. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> true. That, you got that right. And don't forget that anybody that's in our tournament, these are the 16 pros that we brought in. I, you know, it's so weird to call them pros because I don't even know what a pro is or pro isn't, but everybody knows who we're talking about. The 16 invited players will all be giving an hour, approximately an hour lesson per day for the length of the, of the eight or nine days that they're here, which means... There's 144 hours of free lessons that everybody can take part in. Now, granted, some are going to get a little crowded because they're going to be doing them on a seven-foot table, and we'll have them posted when the times are. But they're going to give one a day for nine days. And they'll be going over some things they do. And it's going to be very interesting because some of these people don't speak English. But, you know, it's pretty easy to understand how do you break them in German or Taiwanese or, China or Mandarin or whatever you want to do it. It's just it's exciting to 
get this build up this rapport between the amateurs and the pros because I'm a firm believer that's what it has to be. You have to have it, you can't have such such a division. We've all got to be rowing in the same boat, you know. Yep. And also VIP seats for those two primary tables for these challenge matches and the invitationals. VIP uh, seats are on sale through playcsipool.com. Also playbca.com. There are assigned get... seats too. You get you own yep. that seat. Yep. And there's not very many. There's 40 and that's over both around both tables, so you know. It's, yep. uh, and they've started to go already. Yeah. So if you're interested in being front and center for all that awesome action, go yeah, to the, go to the website, purchase your seat online. That will be your seat for yep. the duration yep. of the week. Yeah. And you know, we had I, I, since we have an hour, we can diverge a little bit here, a little bit. Um, we again threads on Easy Billiards about why didn't you invite this guy or that guy, and I'm not coming if Earl's not there. And, you know, and it's just unfortunate, but. Um, there's only 16 spots. There's only four North Americans, and what we can't do is risk anything on somebody that uh, just may not be able to keep it together. So there you have it. And uh, nobody's. There's rumors of this guy's bar and that guy's bar. There was no barring. There was no nothing. And uh, well, you again, know, I'm just gonna say one thing. If you have a question about something we're doing, pick up the damn phone and call me. I get tired of these. Call him. Cowboy don't call guy, me. I get tired of the. Uh, don't call. Don't call me. I, cowboys saying all these things like they know it's a fact and they don't know what the hell they're talking about. It's, it, I'm so accessible. All you do is pick up the phone for Pete's. I have a little different philosophy. Anybody yeah. that has uh, constructive criticism, yeah. good suggestions, anything of that nature, open phone, open email, yeah. open door policy. If you just want to complain about well, something, well, I'm, I'm not going to listen to you. Call Mark. Yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> I'll talk <laughs> to anybody, even you. Yep. <laughs> call Mark for that <laughs> stuff. If it's anything that's going to help us move in the right direction, give me a ring. Yeah. And, and we'll You're take right. care of it. I'm not afraid to wrestle with people. I'm just, but some of them are just. There's a couple people out there that you probably shouldn't call me because <laughs> I might just hang up. Why did you look at me when you said <laughs> that? Because well, I can holler at you. It's, you know, but you know, you have to solve things through communication, and some of these, this sniping is just gets absolutely crazy after a while and I'm in the camp that I think there needs to be some stronger hey, what moderation. do I tell you every day in the office just needs to be stronger moderation don't worry about it yeah I, I'm not I don't get don't just because I get it. it's, it's, turning your, it's turning your hair gray just because listen you got to have passion I you know you got to be able to get excited about things I've got the layout of the table the VIP seats oh you great let's, let's see it yeah Wait one second Wait. do me there's there's All right, folks, you can see these are the two primary tables. This will be the Predator Arena. Uh, we do have bleacher seating, but if you notice the seats 1 through 40, front and center for all that great action, if you want to purchase any of those seats, they will be yours. Nobody else will be allowed to be there except you. And the primary table is the one that's at the top of the screen, the one that's open-ended because that's where the cameras will be. Well, that's where yeah. most of the cameras yeah, yes. will be. But we will have a that's camera. That's why I say the primary table. Yep. We're, we're going to have a camera situated over table number two, the Correct. one at the bottom. And, uh, you know, if the action's a little slow, it's hard to imagine. But if it is on... Well, you're going to have some might blow out and some, you know, you, have, you, you, never can't, know. you don't know what's going to But we happen. want the ability to flip back and forth yep. for key moments and things of that nature. So there's the layout, folks. Thanks, Justin. Very helpful. And, yeah, uh, it's gonna be. It's gonna be. I mean, I'm. I'm really excited about some of these matches, and uh, uh, and then you know, well, then we're still. We still have to put together the pro am, which is gonna be mm -hmm. in between these two events, and that's gonna be uh, with an amateur and a pro player, and then we also have Joe Tucker's doing the American rotation. That's the American Billiard Club yep. situation. They're gonna have their 16 key people playing their finals. It's on about a two. And a lot game. of that will be on those tables in between the days. Correct. Yeah. Uh, of the two so invitational events. The tables are full. There's going to be a lot of stuff going on, a lot of education, a lot of... Uh, and anybody that wants to know about the ABC League, they can be there. Anything about the USA Pool League or the BCA Pool League, we're going to have... They're all going to have uh, exhibitor booths. Diamond will have a booth. Uh, Cyclop Balls will have a booth. And uh, yep. among uh, 30 or 40 other exhibitors. And by the way, if you have any interest in being an exhibitor, please get in touch with us. Uh, we created some more booths this year because we eliminated... 14 nine-foot tables. So remember last year, or if you weren't here last year, we had 17 nine-foot tables set up for competition. That's because we had the junior nationals. That was 16 plus the TV table, 17. Those are gone. So we rotated the uh, uh, tournament desk, and it created, we added uh, 
about 20 bar tables in that room and about eight booths. So we well, have some we have some space for exhibitors and uh, don't wait too long because there's still some pretty good spots left. That's a great opportunity for exhibitors, particularly yeah. uh, pool industry exhibitors, to have a, such a captive audience yeah. for that long a period of time. And all the exhibitors this year are in this one main room, which is called the Pavilion Ballroom. And that room is open 24-7. I'm still hoping the Action Pool Tour can get a discounted Exhibitor booth, Why? but you're a little hard to work with. Ah, eh, well. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever, boss. <laughs> so let's let's talk about the uh, BCA Pool League okay. National Championships. So all of these pro events that we've been talking about will be held in conjunction with what really is the main deal. Boy, the main event is the, the BCA Pool League National Championships. Uh -huh. That's July 16th through the 26th at the Rio All Suite Hotel yeah. and Casino. And they have, that's where the World Series of Poker is held. I mean, they, and they just put new carpet in there. This is right probably, before us. As this, a is, this is the, uh, probably the best venue in town for what we're doing. It's, yeah. it's great. I actually, yeah. uh, for the first time, did a walkthrough a few days ago. I think it was on Monday uh, through the Rio looking at the spaces that we're going to occupy. Pretty impressive, isn't it? Wow. It's mind blowing. Wow. And we've, got, we've got TV walls. When you come down the hallway from the casino, there's a, it's either 9 or 16 or 12. I'm not sure which. TVs put together wall, and, and that will be the stream that Justin is putting out on the CSI feed. It's it's and a an it's, amazing facility. Yeah. And then uh, they have big ten foot, twelve foot projection screens, so you'll be able to see what's going on on the TV table from a, several different places. All our software is going to be in place. Last year we got kind of a little backwards in the moving process. We lost a day because of some issues, and then the power went out, and we didn't get to hook up a lot of our technology. So this year, we're making a little bit better arrangements and working. The hotel yep. now's, now knows who we are. <laughs> uh, but we'll have, uh, it's uh, all paperless TVs. Uh, well, and, and I do want to say, uh, you know, we look at comments and feedback from, from the audience that was there last yeah. year. And really, there were two main gripes, I'll say, from last year's BCA Pool League National Championships. One was the cost of food Correct. at the hotel, and two was the uh, unavailability of open practice tables. Yeah. So, just want to let everybody know, we heard you. Uh, we are working with the Rio to get more food, uh, better yeah. priced food. Longer hours, because they, yeah, they were closing the cafe down at 7 o'clock. Longer hours. Work for so, I can players. tell you, I was involved in, in a meeting on Monday, yeah, and those were key points yes. of discussion. So. This year, I expect that it's going to be yeah. better. Also, Mr. Griffin has added uh, how, how many seven-foot tables? Well, we've added about 20 tables, but the real issue last year was when we lost the power. They had a 70-mile-an-hour mini hurricane or whatever come through. I mean, Don't was, say tropical storm again. Well, well it, it was crazy. It was picking couches off of the top of the, of the uh, Rio and flipping them over and running, dropping them through cab drivers' windows downstairs, 50 floors down. Um, and we lost the power for 12 or 14 hours, um, and it threw us so far behind. It took us three days to get caught up, so we had to consume a lot of the tables that we had earmarked for uh, uh, practice tables. Catch back up on tournament and, and then And we had a little bit of an issue with the, the minis and everything, so we've resolved all those issues, and we've added about 20 tables yep. that are dedicated for practice. So there'll be, and it's really a heck of a deal. If you were to play the singles, and just come in and play the singles, let's just say, and you pay your entry fee and the green fees and all this, that you can play pool for nine days for like $35. It's a little crazy. Uh, you know. Yep. So we're, we're, uh, we're working to get the food prices down. Uh, part of what drove it up, and, and won't go into too much detail, but is the World Series of Poker is there right they in front of us. They jack every price up. Even the Coke machine, yep. they didn't have time to take them from the normal 2 or $3 to the $5. Yep. And, well, and we didn't know about it. Now, and now we, you know, and, and yep. now we're getting all that fixed. So, so, so we think this year is going to be much better for the players. Uh, we're going to have eight ball, nine ball, and ten ball events uh, in teams, doubles, and singles for all skill levels. Lots of mini tournaments, second chance tournaments. There's going to be a lot of action for everybody all week. Yep. And then plus we have special events. So six pockets going to be there, and they're going to be mm -hmm. having their uh, some some uh, an, an American rotation and. Uh, uh, Mark uh, or uh, Mark Estes will be there with the USA Pool League. They have their national tournament at the same time as ours, but he can explain how that works and what the difference is between that and the BCA Pool League, and because they're both uh, subsidiaries of uh, CSI. Yep. And so. Uh, and the USA Pool League is uh, it's it's relatively new. It's only uh, it's only a few, years. few yeah. years old. 
uh, but it's going to be a major focus for CSI moving forward in the future. Uh, but lots of great opportunities for all players. And if you're not a BCA League member, you still have an opportunity to come play in this tournament. All you need to do is purchase a player membership for 25 bucks For a year. For an entire year. Calendar year. Uh, but you'll get to play in various singles and doubles events, depending on your skill level. Well, and minis and everything else. And minis and yeah. lots to do. There, you know, it's... Uh, it, Every year we do something new, so the next year we can do something new. And you know, yep. it's, it, there's going to be a lot of new stuff coming out. And it's all about pool. It's all about uh, if you're a BCA pool league or a USA pool league or a CSI member, you'll get discounts at some of our future events. And there's just we're trying to make a package. We're trying to move forward and still keep the amateurs as amateurs and the pros as pros. But there has to be some communications. This is great with only 16 players. Um, they'll get to mingle and everything. That's uh, it's great that they're going to see how some of the world's best players, but it's unfortunate because they don't live here. So, I mean, you're going to watch Ko Pin Yi play, but you may never see him again mm -hmm. until maybe next year. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is a start. I think the invitational process is the way to go. Last year we spent so much money in hauling tables in here and hanging lights, and uh, we had 96 players in the 8 ball, 96 players in the 10 ball, and 64 in the 1 pocket, and it was... Uh, it's an expensive proposition, and we just can't do it anymore. Well, and I will say for all the players that may have been looking forward to play in what last year was the U.S. Open 10 ball, U.S. Open 8 ball, and you're not, you're not included in the invitational events, there's still lots of opportunities for you to come out and play. We have the 9 ball challenge, the 10 ball challenge, and the Grandmaster 8 ball, and they're back-to-back. -back. So there are three events back-to-back -back that will consume a whole week. Uh, for you to play in. And if you sign up for all three at once, you get a $55 discount off your entry fees. Plus there'll be minis that you can play in. There's going to be uh, special events. If we get enough people that want to play, I mean, we could play a $500 mini. We could do whatever you want to get enough people to get involved. So it's, a, it's yep. really, uh, we have the tables, we have the staff. Here's the, I got the schedule if you guys want to. Yeah, bring up in. the schedule of events. Yeah. This is the schedule of, of events for the BCA Pool League and USA Pool League National and Championships. Is that the newest one? Does it have all the events on the bottom? Justin's blown it up for us. Yeah. You can see right there at the top is the triple play. If you right. sign up for that, that will get you in all three events that I mentioned, the 9-ball challenge, 10-ball challenge, and the Grandmaster 8-ball. Or you can sign up for them individually. But there's lots of events. Yeah, we're at 33 events for the amateurs, I think. And that's before. It might, it's probably higher than that now. And then, yeah. uh, so you can see we've got Scotch doubles events, singles teams, events, teams events. Men's, women's, seniors. Then there with the red heading is the... USA Pool League National Championship yeah. schedule. And we're also doing the artistic this year on yeah. seven foot tables. Now this one doesn't have the challenge matches, so we need to get Mr. Justin a newer schedule. We're working on that. Yeah. He's okay. pulling this directly from the website right ah, now. But, okay. oh. but this is this is our schedule of events so far. This doesn't include the pro events, but right. really this is for those other folks to yeah. come in and sign up. So Well if you if you like pool, this is the greatest it is the greatest show on the work on the earth. And I do want to show you, this This is playbca.com. If you look at the top, folks, VIP seating now available. That's for the pro events. We talked about that earlier. Uh, also, information on dress code. There is the VIP seat page where you can purchase your seats. And also, if you go back a page to the schedule, for anybody out there interested in being a vendor right there in red, click that link. It'll send an email. Yep. Oh, yeah, that's why. So, you know, it's, uh, I mean, it's, uh, and I really, I'm not, I, I mean, I enjoyed the rib. We were there for so many years. We just outgrew the rib. We ran out of space. You know, the, the, the Rio has about 60,000 more feet than the rib has, and it's, and it's more modern. And Justin could attest to how difficult it was to get our stream out of the rib. It was built in 1955. Think about that. You know, and their technology just isn't there. And uh, um, that's when you first started getting a senior citizen discount at right, McDonald's. Yeah. yeah, I came in to play in the seniors. I was the only one there. Yeah, so I won. Hey. <laughs> also, I will say one more thing about the BCA Pool League and USA Pool League National Championships. We want you to play. Uh, why would you not if you're in town anyway, all those great events? But even if you're not going to play, if you're staying at the Rio for any reason whatsoever, maybe you're, maybe you're buying a VIP seat and you just want to watch, 
whatever the case may be, when you book your room, the best thing to oh, do yeah. is to go through our website, playbca.com or playcsipool.com, and click on the Rio reservation link. Yeah, you've got to use that code. And here's why. It, well, if you use the link, you don't need a code. But here's why. Two reasons. One, you're going to get discounted room rate, $79 uh, throughout the week, $129 on weekends, I think. That's pretty good for the Rio. These are all suites. It's not, it's not you know, yeah, it's, it's not the Ramada hotel, Inn. Yeah. It's just not. Those are really good and rates. That's uh, up to four? I'm not I, sure. I know. It's, I think it's three or four. There, there is one of the links Justin yeah. was just pointing yeah. to. So if you click on our reservation link, this is the page you're going to go to. You don't need to put in any kind of code. Okay. You'll automatically di get the discount. The other cool thing about that is, just about every hotel in Las Vegas now charges resort fees. Absolutely. And it's usually around the magnitude of, what, 18 to this, 23 this bucks. This is an $18 a night resort fee. Yep. And so if you, if you don't go through us or through our room block, you're going to get tagged 18 bucks a night when you leave. Yep. And just for people that yeah. don't know, because I'm from the East Coast and I didn't know what the heck that was until I came out here <laughs> last year, they'll advertise a rate of... Like you may go to a cheap hotel and they'll advertise a rate of $39.99 a night, and you go, man, that is, that's awesome. Too cheap, yes. So you'll book, and you'll stay there for five days. And then when you check out, you get hit with a bill that's you know, $117. And, yep. and you say, what's that for? That's oh, well, that's our resort fees. Yeah. You know, $18 or $20 a right. night. And it so adds up. Supposedly, that's the fees that cover all your amenities that they don't include in your room rate. The point is, if you book through our link... You, there are no resort fees and you get the discounted rate. Right. If you're too stubborn to go online <laughs> and use our link, maybe you don't have a computer, maybe maybe the power went out and it's throwing your sofa around the yard. <laughs> uh, you can also call the Rio and use our group discount code. That code is all capitals S R C U E and the number four. S R Q the number four. So what is what that? You, what is that again? I'll put it up. S R C U E four and the number four. No spaces, all caps. S R Q four. And that's just the rooming. That's the rooming. That's our group rooming. discount code, and you'll avoid the resort fees and get the discounted rate. Like I said, we want you to play, but if you're there for any reason, use that code. Do yourself a favor. And remember, Save a little money. when you're staying in the room, you get to watch the pay-per-view for free. Absolutely. And and uh, Justin will be looping that. So as if, if the match is in at 10 o'clock at night, he just puts it on again. You can watch it all night long. Yep. And so there you go, folks. There's the code, SRQ4. Again, you, it's still a better bet to go through our website because you know that nobody's going to make a mistake yep. that way. Uh, but if you need to call and book your room, yep. there's the code. No, it's, um, and this is our second year. We expect some glitches, but, you know, we were at the Rio for Riv for 19 years, so um, give us another year or two, and and because uh, we're not going anywhere, we're going to be at the Rio for quite a while. That yeah. place, it was it was so large. It is large. <laughs> I well, the run front the front room is 64 or 68 thousand. The Amazon room is 49 thousand, and then you've got this. The I don't Brazilian know how many. Is 24 thousand. I don't know how many thousand, but I can tell you that I parked right in front of the convention center. <laughs> I walked it once. Just all the spaces we were going to occupy yeah. and back, and I was just so tired yeah. after oh, it. Just geez. it was crazy. No wonder you're out of air. You ain't got a prayer. I'll, just, <laughs> I'll get my cart and drag race you. <laughs> Anyhow, I mean we're excited about it, and well we better be because it's only 60 days away. Somebody better be excited. I guess it should be us. I'm excited. It, you no, know, this is your first one. You're gonna. It's, it's yeah, easy. It's easy. You just get yeah. too worked up over that. No, no. Last year we we the, the we were it was a strain last year just because you can caution a hotel and say you know we're big. Hey, listen, we just did the poker. We got the poker guys. If we can do them, we can do anybody. He says yeah, but we're not poker people. We do things differently. No, they wanted to close their cafe at seven at night. And they they just wouldn't listen to us and. They got the message. I'll tell you one thing. If <laughs> if people out there understood. <laughs> The, the time and the coordination and the, lo the logistics, the union issue, all these issues that we have to iron out and deal with. Yeah. They wouldn't do it. <laughs> Whew. 
Yeah, we attempted to. We were looking at doing one on the East Coast, and it just the, the unions and the and the logistic issues and the requirements of security and and garbage deposits and this and that. Just pretty soon, you, you'd have to charge nine hundred dollars for people to walk in the door. It's really yep. tough. I mean, but you, you, we look at it from our. We're outsiders looking in. It costs a lot of money to build these hotels and turn on the power and pay the insurance. And absolutely. I mean, when, whenever one of these new hotels opens up, they say, "Well, we're putting out a hiring call. We need eight thousand workers." He said, "Excuse me, <laughs> it's just that's a city. That's <laughs> what it takes to run one of these hotels with three thousand rooms. It's absolutely. crazy." Yep. You know? So I don't know, but we're excited. Well Mark, we're uh, we're about eleven minutes early. Well, I can tell Alaskan jokes. So we have plenty of time <laughs> for me to just make fun of you. For well, that won't take long. <laughs> I do want to break. I like I like I like funny stories. Oh yeah, you gonna show Justin's handiwork? I'm, well, <laughs> I, I, I'll flash it real quick. But uh, Justin, you don't mind me telling this story, do you? Go for it. All right. Justin is our graphics guy. He's our media manager, and we're working on. The BC. Yeah. Well, we're working on a lot of stuff, but one of the things we're working on, I say we, yeah. Justin's working on, is the BCA Pool League poster for next, next league year. year. So, this is this is just I, a concept. I, I, so Justin <laughs> threw something together, and he sent me an email this morning. Which next year and he is said, the 39th year. It is. He said, "Hey, I threw a concept together." He said, uh, just let me know if you think we're going in the right, right direction, direction. <laughs> and if we are, we'll keep moving. If not, we'll do something else. And I'm not. I'm not going to do any kind of close-up or anything, but this <laughs> he's going to put it up there. Uh, Whoops. This, What's is, it say? this yeah. is Justin's concept. Let's see if I can get it. Look at the text. Money, Money sex, neck margarita. Come on, Justin. Wait a minute. One second. I got it. Hold on. I, had to, I hit the wrong button there. Hit the wrong this button. Is, there you go. Here we go. Move it down a little bit. This is Justin's concept. Don't pay attention to the dates and everything. It's just a concept. Money, sex, neck margaritas, 100 events, free hookers and blow, <laughs> two billion added three ball event. <laughs> Below that, every logo known to man goes here. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. As Justin's, Justin's sick sense of humor. Yeah. I thought that was funny. I wanted to share that to everybody. This is the kind of stuff that I have to put up with <laughs> from everybody every day. No, this is great. Actually, the free hookers and blow part, I fell out of my chair laughing. It's pretty good. I, showed, I know somebody's going to show up and ask where the $2 billion is. I oh, and I, <laughs> I showed that to Cleary in, on, on Facebook, and I sent him the picture, and all he said was, he replies, he goes, I know one thing, I will be there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, his, his feelings probably got hurt because we didn't invite him, right? <laughs> oh, one other thing I'll say. I mentioned... I think it was last podcast, two weeks ago, that we have an F-pot in the oh, office. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. The F-pot uh, lady in our office, Robin Boggs, she's either listening now or will be. Oh, I got her in trouble, too. She instituted an F-pot in the office, and anytime anyone uses the F-word, no, that's not free, it's the other F-word, you have to put a dollar in the pot. And I'm proud to say that we're now, thanks to Mark, we're up to about a quarter of a million dollars. <laughs> no, 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 you're not. Listen to this guy. <laughs> yeah, Jerry Forsythe owes us a buck because he said it twice over the phone. You From know, Georgia, you, you get a you get half price if you say it over the phone. No, <laughs> no, it's just good and fun and games. It could be my kids' retirement fund. Oh no, 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 college fund. Well, no, no, no. Anyhow, I mean, I just hope everybody can get a chance to uh, follow what we're doing. Come out to uh, the Rio in uh, mid July, have some fun, watch pool. You'll see more. Pool, then you, you'll get sick of it. Is what it is, but it's it's awesome. And you know we do have the, the WPA World Trick Shots going on. That's coming on. That's a Thursday, Friday, Saturday. The first Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And then that room is hopefully it's going to have either between six and twelve tables. We're still working on the math because the lights, the room has no inadequate lighting, and that we got to get a number on that now from the hotel. And that's going to be uh, converted into an action room after the because uh, it's only it only lasts. I mean they're done after the first weekend. They're front loading it so. And Tom Rossman will be there. And in fact, Tom Rossman did some work for us, and uh, Justin's going to be putting that up on our YouTube space uh, page here in the next couple of days. We, we, we did film some instructional content with Tom, and we'll be going through it yeah. here shortly. Yeah. And uh, putting up all the appropriate stuff on well, the CSI all, YouTube channel. Plus, you've channel. got a bunch of other YouTube stuff going on. We've got a lot of the pat matches from uh, the bar table, and, yep. and I know there's going to be some more coming up from the past events we've had, which is the U.S. Open 1 Pocket, U.S. Open 10 Ball, U.S. Open 8 Ball. So, Absolutely. So it's going to have... Quite a, 
quite a bit of content that uh, as time goes on. So we're trying. It's if there, you know, there's no rest for the wicked, you know. So what can I say? I don't really have much more to say, you know. I mean, just. Um, well, you know, we got a lot of cool stuff coming up after July too. Yeah. The only I mean, thing I'll say is Lynn Wessler came into the office and he's a he, cardiac kid on Easy Billiards. Mm -hmm. Lives in uh, Rock. Um, it's upper New York. Um, What's that city up there? Rockford? No, that's Illinois. It's uh, Rochester. Rochester, New York. He's been there for like 60 years or something. And, you know, it, it, it's, uh, it seems that, you know, I mean, I'm on oxygen these days, so they tell me. And uh, he looked at me and says, hey, you look great. I, I just didn't think you'd look anything like this from what I heard. You know, I'm not falling over dead, folks. It's just, it means I smoked too long, even though I quit 23 years ago. And uh, that's one reason why I stay nice and skinny and lean and mean, because if I weighed, you know, another 40 pounds, I'd be rolling around in a wheelchair. And then I'd run over his feet, and then he'd cry, and I'd, he'd sue me, and we'd be out of business. And, Instead, uh, you just trip us with your leash. Yeah, I just, that's right. I just, you know, but everything's fine. You know, it just means I just, I'm not running any marathons. Before we went on air, folks, uh, Mark was sitting here, and he says, you know, I think we have 62 days left of the tournament. I said, yeah. I said, does that mean in 63 days you retire? <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to start taking some time off. Uh, that's uh, that's the plan. You going to trust the company in my hands? No, I'll find somebody else. Uh, by that's then. That's pretty dangerous. <laughs> you probably won't survive that long. <laughs> it's easy. Oh well. It's yeah. Easy I know stuff. It is. Anyhow, I'm, I I got nothing else to say, which I know is hard to believe. Uh, other than, see, if you want to know about Alaska, call me. And if you want to talk about anything we're doing, call me. I'd much rather have somebody call me and talk. Even you know, we can disagree and still be respectful. I've said that on a couple of Facebook posts and everything, and I, it doesn't sink in, you know. And but I, I will not talk to anybody unless I know who the hell I'm talking to. So keep that in mind. I'll stick to the line earlier. If you have something uh, that could help us improve our organization, criticism? contact yeah. me. And if you just want to complain, well, contact I, Mark. I take, I take constructive criticism too. Or destructive criticism. Who How about you, Justin? You got anything you want to say? No, man, I'm good. You're good. All right, well. All right, let's get out of here. We're four minutes early. That's okay. It's a record. That's okay. Two weeks from tonight, podcast number six. Good night, everybody. Yeah. Thank you very much.